Who is Eric Cantona? Some will know him as the guy who volleyed a fan in the middle of a game. The older heads may know him for dominating with Leeds before the Premier League even existed. And the younger students among you will know him for his as flies to want some boys. They are for the goats speech. Eric's elegant yet energetic style of play made him a joy to watch, but at the same time, Cantona's chaos and controversy had him labelled as a wild child from early. To go from being the wild child to the king of Manchester is quite some story, but if you're like me and you only got to watch him on Premier League years on Sky Sports back in the day, you may not have any idea just how influential this guy was before the Prem began in 1992. Luckily for you, I dug through the archives and I studied the tapes to educate you on what was happening in France before he made that trip over to England to become a legend of the game. Grab your pen and paper and get ready for the roller coaster story of Eric Cantona. Cantona was born in Marseille in 1966 into a family of fighters from various international wars. When he hit his teenage years, he actually played as a goalkeeper for his local team, S.O. Kayole, to try and be like his dad. But everyone knows the worst or least athletic player is the one that gets chucked in goal. So he quickly moved outfield. And for 200 games, he was scouted by Auxerre. A couple years in the U team were followed by his pro debut in November 1983. But he didn't actually get his first goal until a couple years later because his career was on pause due to having to carry out national service. He quickly picked up back where he left off though and started scoring crucial goals in big games to the point where he was given his first France international cap in 1987. He'd of course end up scoring on his debut to announce himself even further. Considering he was playing on loan at second division Martigues a year earlier, Cantona's stock was now flying up like Bitcoin until that infamous Kung Fu kick. No, not that one. Don't be silly guys, that was a random fan that got booted. This assault was on a player from the opposing team, Michel Dezakarian. I don't know if bro thought it was on an episode of the Gladiators, but he quickly received a three month suspension. That being said, he was still able to win the 1988 under 21 euros after a hat trick against England in the quarters. At that point, it was time for Eric to take another step up. In 1989, Cantona got his dream move to the club that he loved as a boy, Marseille. After a French record fee, it was time for the first chapter of a new love story. Well, until a friendly game against Torpedo Moscow, where he lashed the ball at the crowd and ripped off his shirt like he's about to go Super Saiyan 3, all because he was substituted. Evidently, this guy wasn't a fan of following authority, because he'd already been banned for saying some very wild things on TV about the French course that I cannot say because we're in a classroom and I'm not trying to get demonetized. Despite bagging goals, he was sent on loan to Bordeaux and then Montpellier in quick succession and actually had good goal scoring records at both clubs. Cantona was starting to cook and his quality was finally taking centre stage. And then he went and launched his boots at his own teammates face. A few of the squad demanded that he be released, but Laurent Blanc and Carlos Valderrama had influence and ensured that it was only a 10 day ban from the training ground. It proved to be the right decision as he ended up spearheading his team to the French Cup. Marseille obviously brought him back, but constant managerial changes just stopped his flow. Even though he had a massive hand in them winning the French first division title, the relationship between him and the chairman became untenable and it was time to go after two league titles and 14 goals for the club. Eric joined Nîmes Olympique for 10 million francs as yet another team tried to tame the wild child. When you are as talented as this, it's no shock that teams are willing to take risks on you. This is like Arteta's I can fix him gene, but for disciplinary problems. Unfortunately, it was chaos again as this time he launched a football at a referee and was facing another ban. Instead of him to say, yeah, my bad fellas, I got a little bit heated, he chose to walk up to each member of the French Football Federation committee to call them an idiot to their face. I'm not sure what impact he was hoping that would make, but his band got doubled and he decided that he was done with football for good. Platini was a massive fan and him, alongside Houllier, convinced him to give it one last try. But rather than stay under the scrutiny of France's hostile media, they recommended that he take the trip to sunny England. Platini was moving around England like a door-to-door -door salesman offering the services of Eric Cantona. But Graham Sooner said no, he didn't want to mess up dressing room harmony, even though he'd happily go on to sign Ali Dyer for Southampton after one prank phone call a few years later. Cantona eventually ended up at Leeds, as Sheffield Wednesday could not afford to keep him on after his trial. This time, it was definitely a risk that paid off, because Cantona's goals playing in a front three alongside Chapman and Rod Wallace led to Leeds winning the first division title in the final year before it became the Premier League that we know today. The following season, in the 1992 Community Shield, he dunked a hat-trick on Liverpool's head tops and his reputation was going from strength to strength. But the European fixture pileup took his toll as he started to suffer from fatigue and injuries. He was low-key showing his old habits, soaking off the pitch after being substituted and his coach Wilkinson wasn't happy with him whatsoever, dropping him whenever he stepped out of line. The team was struggling and yet he still wasn't getting game time despite scoring whenever he'd go to France for international duty. He was livid and ended up handing in a transfer request, demanding to go to one of the three biggest clubs in England, United, Liverpool or Arsenal.
Cantona signed from Manchester United for £1 million, a transfer that had Leeds fans foaming at the mouth given their history of United on and off the pitch in recent years. United were desperate for goals after failed attempts to sign Alan Shearer and Matt Letizia and in Cantona they had finally found their man. This was that 4-4-2 era and he formed a deadly link up with Mark Hughes up top. They were steamrolling teams and Cantona was scoring goals that there's no tomorrow, finally avoiding the controversy and bad headlines. Well, apart from the time he spat at a Leeds fan after his hostile return to Ellen Road. United were going to blow the competition out the water and make Cantona the first player to win back-to-back -back English League titles with two different clubs. And then, he'd do it again the next season, this time adding an FA Cup medal alongside it as he'd score a brace against Chelsea in the 1994 final. 25 goals in all comps as well as a PFA Player of the Year award was an indication that he had finally found his home, especially after he was given the iconic number 7 shirt worn by guys like George Best back in the day. He was still receiving red cards upon red cards like it was Valentine's Day, but his contributions across 90 minutes made it all worth it. The following season, United pushed for that 3 -peat. But the train was sent off the rails in January 1995 as he received yet another red card and on his way to the tunnel he turned into a character from Mortal Kombat and volley a palace fan who was supposedly hurling racial abuse at him. He got his sentence reduced from prison to just community service and funnily enough the guy who he volleyed ended up going to prison himself after assaulting the prosecutor who wasn't hearing it when he tried to claim that he just said it's an early bath for you Mr Cantona. I don't know who he thought he was fooling with that one but Mr Cantona was banned from football for 8 months. He was stripped of his France captaincy never to play for them again and Black Blackburn ended up winning their first Premier League title. After much speculation about him leaving England forever, he made his comeback in October 1995 and would obviously score against Liverpool. But aside from that, it took him a while to fully get going after so many months without playing even so much as a friendly behind closed doors. In the second half of the season though, he was fully back to his best, scoring goal after goal and ending up as the club's top scorer despite being forbidden to play in the UEFA Cup and the League Cup. Still, Cantona captain United in the FA Cup final as they completed the double in the absence of Steve Bruce. That summer, he was made the permanent captain as Steve Bruce departed to Birmingham. He was clearly the sort of captain that would lead his team on the pitch rather than be a wonderful example outside of it. It's incredible that someone with such a short fuse could play football like the calmest player in the world. Make no mistake though, Cantona was a winner, picking up six league titles in seven years. Nevertheless, once he reached the age of 30, he decided that his time was up. In his five seasons at United, he'd go on to score 82 goals in 185 games in all competitions. And his trophy hall in England consisted of four Premier Leagues, two FA Cups and three Community Shields. For all of Cantona's individual awards, he wasn't the most lethal goal scorer. 165 goals in 439 career games doesn't sound outrageous given the numbers that we see today. But it's important to note that he wasn't an out and out nine. He often played behind the strikers or even in midfield on occasion. His impact went beyond Microsoft Excel spreadsheets showing you goals and assist numbers. Whether it's the Kung Fu kick, the countless trophies, or even just the color up celebration of the scoring that audacious lob, Cantona will be remembered one way or another. He had that villainous aura from day one, and it's no shock that he's going to have a career in acting after his retirement. It's a shame that we never really got to see him in France's golden era in the late 90s, but with guys like Zidane in his place, I guess he did alright in the end. Even fast forward into recent years when he picked up his UEFA President's Award in 2019, his speech left the audience surprised, startled and speechless, just like he used to do back in his playing career. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's lesson on a player that revolutionised the history of Manchester United. If you did, make sure you leave a like on this video, comment what players you want to see next and subscribe for new lessons every Monday. Class dismissed. Bosch.